Welcome to another video everybody. I know furniture is very subjective especially when it comes to refinishing but there is one thing that we can all agree on and that's that everybody loves a good before and after. How we go from that before to the after however is often open for debate and discussion. There's often several different ways of doing the same thing. I've been doing this for years now but I still have a lot to learn and I still screw up. <laughs> What this video is about is five mistakes that I made last year in my videos and how I would do them differently today. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing this, it's a learning curve for everybody. So let's look at some furniture mishaps. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. I'm going way back for this first one. This is actually the very first piece I did a YouTube video for. And you can tell <laughs> if you go back and watch that first video, the audio levels are all over the place. The music is really loud when it shouldn't be and my voice is quiet when it shouldn't be. But it doesn't matter, I was learning. Anyway, that's not the point. I started by taking this curbside find apart doing a bunch of repairs on it, giving it a really good cleaning. There was a big chunk missing on the leg that I glued back on and repaired. I had some dovetail drawers that needed a little bit of attention as well. And I already knew that I needed to change the hardware. Some of them were actually broken, so I really didn't have a choice. The original hardware had left some dents in the drawer faces, so I just filled those. I knew immediately that I wanted this to be a wood and paint combination, so I stripped and sanded the top, and everything else is getting painted. I found a ton of these brand new cup pulls at the Habitat for Humanity Restore, um, but I wanted them to be a slightly different color. I used a custom mix navy blue from Fusion Mineral Paint for the body of the dresser. And I used a gel stain on the top, sealed with Odie's oil. This piece had no back, so I used some backerboard scraps that I had. I like to reuse scraps where I can rather than throw things away, so that was fine with me. I used Wise Owl Furniture Salve to seal in the paint and nourish the insides of the drawers. And at this point, I was ready to put my new hardware on, and then I realized I messed up. The screw holes on these pulls are at the very bottom of the pull, not in the center. Which means that if I use these original screw holes, my pull is going to be way too high. This is something that I should have checked before I even started painting. What this meant was that I had to fill the original holes, sand everything smooth, wipe everything down with some mineral spirits to help dissolve the waxes in the sealer that I put on, drill new holes, and repaint everything. Once the paint was dry, I could reseal it, add the hardware, and I was done. It's a silly mistake, but it's not one that I'll ever make again, and I'm hoping by watching this, it will spare you the same fate. Even with that pretty big hiccup at the end, I'm still super happy with how this turned out. I know these pulls are probably a bit much for some people, I personally love them. This piece also would have been a great candidate for adding a new base and putting on more modern hardware. This next piece was a disaster to say the least. I picked this up actually for free on Facebook Marketplace. It had holes drilled in it everywhere, including a great big one where they had cords going down. This is a Danish teak veneer desk. I've refinished these several times, I've never seen one as bad as this one. I started by taking everything apart, removing these white brackets on the legs. Those aren't original to the piece, that's something that they had added. But if the table is secured properly and screwed together properly, you shouldn't need those. It should be sturdy enough on its own, so I removed them. In most cases, teak is not sealed with a typical film finish on top. Normally it's some sort of oil like a Danish oil if the finish is actually original, which is really easy to sand. Scraping and stripping really wouldn't have been appropriate in this case because there's nothing to scrape or strip. The oil finish is in the wood itself, so sanding through it is pretty much the only option. 
I could have hand sanded, I opted for a power sander for everything aside from the handles and the edges, only because the top was so bad and there were so many scratches I needed to try to get down a little bit further than a hand sanding would give me. Now this is how I chose to fill this hole. If I had this desk in my workroom right now and I was doing it again, I would do it differently. I'll tell you how in a second, but what I did here is I used some quick wood, which is a hard drying wood epoxy to fill that gap and then some teak wood filler to fill the rest of the holes as well as the very top of the big hole once it had completely dried. Were I doing this piece again, I still would have used the epoxy in the hole, but I would have replaced this area with new teak veneer, probably cut more on a diagonal, but that would have been a much smoother patch job and less noticeable at the end. I didn't actually have teak veneer on hand, that's why I chose to do it this way. And it's okay, I knew this piece wouldn't turn out absolutely perfect, it was just such a wreck to begin with. The person who bought it is in love with it, <laughs> so that's all that matters to me. This didn't end up in the dump. I used a stain marker to go over the areas of the teak wood filler before I applied the Odie's oil, which darkened them up a bit. The Odie's just really brought out the warmth and beauty of the teak. Like, the, this color is unreal. This isn't stain, this is just the Odie's oil. The areas on the top at the front were quite chewed up from use over the years, so I used a little bit of nutmeg stain along the edges to try to blend in that damage a little bit. Overall, I'm thrilled with how this turned out. I actually had a comment the other day from somebody who asked if I was embarrassed by my work because I didn't show an actual overhead close-up of the whole repair in my video, even though there was one on my Instagram. So I'm including it here for you to see. No, I am not embarrassed or ashamed. I did the absolute best I could with what I had to work with. I think we can all agree that this is a million times better than what I started with. I used a few different color stains and paint markers to try to mimic the wood grain here and help this patch blend in a little bit more. The video for this pair of night tables is kind of, <laughs> it was a bit of a thorn in my side because I had finished the piece, loved it, uploaded the video, loved it, and then realized I made a huge mistake. <laughs> I ended up taking the video down, cutting that mistake out, re-uploading the video with the intent of one day going back through like I am today and explaining why I took that out. I'll get to that in a moment, I just want to explain what I'm doing here. So I just did a quick scratch test to make sure the adhesion was good. Whoever painted this did do a good job, the adhesion is great. I used some mineral spirits to remove any wax that might be on the outside before I paint. And then I can address these tops. These tops actually consist of an outer edge of solid wood and pressed wood sandwiched by two pieces of wood veneer. So the top is a wood veneer. The underside is the wood veneer and there's press wood in the middle and at some point it's gotten wet. And as we all know, when press wood gets wet, it swells and causes these bubbles. It's extremely hard to fix. In this case, removing the top and replacing it is the best option here. Unfortunately, when I pulled the top off, I broke a little piece at the side. That's not a big deal. I just pried it off and I'm going to glue it back to the main part of the nightstand. There's no shame in making mistakes when you're doing this. It's it, it happens to everybody. Sometimes it's not actually a mistake, it's just other people have different opinions on how you should do things, and if it turns out okay, and there's no big safety issues, then it doesn't really matter how you get it done. But in this case, I realized, and only after the fact, that I had made a big mistake, and I couldn't in good conscience leave it in the video. So you can see I'm using these laminated pine panels. I cut it down to size, rounded the edges, sanded it. That's all fine. This is where I screwed up. This clip here is the one that I removed from the video. I should not have used this much glue on a solid wood top, and I know this. <laughs> I know this having worked with wood for years, but 
for some reason I spaced out when I was doing this and I decided to glue it down. I still don't know why to this day. Problem with doing this is that solid wood, it expands and contracts, especially in a place like Nova Scotia that has huge humidity swings. It's very humid here in the summer and very dry in the winter. When you take solid wood like this and make it immobile, that's when it has a tendency to crack and split. And even though I used screws on the underside as well, there is a possibility down the road of having issues with this top cracking or splitting. So you may be wondering why I didn't just leave this in the video and in the description box explain what went wrong. The problem with that is that 90% of people, they don't bother reading the descriptions. So I couldn't put out a video that had an error that large and just hope that people figure it out for themselves. That I just couldn't do that. Anyway, back to the project. So I didn't love the look of these tops with the original paint color I chose. So I tested two different colors, the one on the right and then this color on the left. I ended up going with this blend. This is a custom mixed color. Truthfully, any of these three colors could have worked for someone in their house, but it just, it wasn't quite what I was picturing in my mind. So I just kept going. <laughs> I found the first coat of white wax just left the top still a little bit too yellow, so that's why I'm going in with a second white wax. This is the Liming Wax from Fusion. Love how it turned out. I put the original poles back on after a fresh coat of matte black paint. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that I am not at all afraid of admitting when I screw up in videos. But in the case of this original video, I just, I couldn't in good conscience leave it in there thinking someone might come along watch only that part and then go try it themselves without checking the description box for any explanations I might have. So that's why I pulled that clip out, but I knew at some point I wanted to do a video like this where I explain exactly what happened there. This beat up nearly antique vanity I picked up at a thrift store for 10 bucks and I knew immediately that this was a great candidate for doing something that I had always wanted to do and hadn't tried yet, and that was separating a vanity into two tall side tables or nightstands. It doesn't work with every vanity, it has to be built in such a way that the middle part will come off, and in this case it was. I popped the top off to make it a little bit easier to refinish. The old shellac finish came off quite easily. It did have some repairs to be made. This particular video was part of the $100 challenge. Her goal was to find a piece of furniture and flip it for $100 or less, including all of our materials and products aside from, you know, power tools and tools that you would have around the house anyway. There's actually a whole playlist of other channels that participated in this, so if you go to this video, and I'm going to link all of these videos down below for you to check out, but if you go to this one in particular, you can check the description box of that video for the whole playlist, and you are set for the night. <laughs> I used a custom mixed navy for this one as well. This one was exactly one tester of coal black and one tester of midnight blue. Sometimes I choose to plug hardware holes with dowels. It's just, it's so fast and easy <laughs> if you have the exact right size dowel. I'm sure some people would shudder at the fact that I'm not using the original Bakelite poles for this, but I was trying to make these a little bit more modern looking, so I did drill some new holes, and this is where things went wrong for me. I didn't use my hardware template, and I should have. I did it by measuring, and obviously I was off by the slightest amount, because I could not get this screw to go in the hole. It was only off by the smallest, smallest amount. So what I did to fix it, I just chose a drill bit in the next size up, which widened the hole just enough for me to have a little bit of wiggle room there with the screw. And then obviously once I tighten the screw, everything is tight, so. All in all, this one went actually fairly smoothly until the end again, where I was dealing with the hardware. 
So seriously, measure, measure, measure. Get yourself a hardware template. Don't be like me and screw it up every time. You guys have been asking, here it is. Here's another Rescue Bunny intermission. This is an update, actually. Heather and Dolly have moved on to their forever homes. I miss them terribly, but we have some new boys here. These are our four new fosters. They're only about eight months old. They are huge. They are big bunnies, <laughs> but they're still young and they're clumsy and they're so fun to have around. They don't have names yet. If you can think of some names, pop them below <laughs> and we'll consider them for sure. This final one that I'm showing you today was a pretty dramatic transformation. This was also a curbside find. I found this out in the rain. It had actually just started to rain, so I got it just in time. The finish was terrible. The bottom drawer would not open, and it turned out to be quite a complicated repair, mainly because I didn't have the right tools. So I had to improvise a little bit, and with improvisation, <laughs> sometimes comes shenanigans, and there was no lack of shenanigans in this video if you've seen it. There was quite a bit of damage to the wood on the bottom of the dresser. Split boards and this long black piece that I'm taking off here, that was the reason the drawer wouldn't open all the way or close properly. It was really, really warped. If I had a table saw and a miter saw, I could have whipped this up no problem, but I didn't. So it was a bit of a learning opportunity for me and you both, <laughs> what to do and what not to do. But all in all, this actually turned out pretty well. I actually had a pretty bold disclaimer in this video, specifically not to do some of the things that I was doing in this video. While my repairs themselves turned out okay, the method I used to get those repairs done was not the safest, and I was aware of that when I was filming, that's why I put a disclaimer in the video. There was no way to repair that warped board, so my only option was to make a new one, and I had this piece of scrap hardwood that came off a hutch that I wasn't using. I love saving scraps for this exact reason. You never know when you're going to need one. This whole piece was coated in a strange plastic coating, but underneath that was actual wood veneer, so I tried to strip all this off, sand down to the wood veneer, just having that wood grain exposed is really going to elevate this piece and make it look a lot more elegant and sophisticated, for lack of better terms. I initially took these rounded panels off the bottom drawers thinking I was going to strip them down to wood, but I ended up painting them later, so you'll see me put those back on in a few seconds. Most of the drawers on this piece needed a little bit of attention as well, with the dovetails coming loose, so I just added the tiniest bit of wood glue in and clamped them shut. Gave the solid wood pulls a good hand sanding. And here are a few of the mistakes I made. First of all, when I was adjusting the depth of the blade here, I should have popped the battery off. My finger wasn't anywhere near the trigger. I was fine, but to be honest, it should be good practice to take the battery off or unplug your tools whenever you're making adjustments like that. And this was the little disclaimer that I put in the video. These plunge cuts that I'm doing right now, it's fine to use this saw for it, it's not ideal, but it's fine. But what I should have done was clamp the board down. Kickback is a real thing when it comes to any type of power saw, really. The safer practice is to clamp your projects down. I know we all get lazy and impatient sometimes and just want to get something done, but it's not worth risking a finger. <laughs> and even though this channel was never meant to be educational in the sense that I was literally trying to teach people, I still should take on that responsibility of trying to promote safer practices. I started this channel as a way to document what I was doing on an everyday basis. This is literally my job. I had someone the other day ask why I do so many dressers and why don't I come up with something different and it's, well, this is actually my job, so I do a lot of dressers and this channel is basically just a way to invite you guys along. And if you happen to learn some tips and tricks in the meantime, that's great. I know I've learned a lot from some of you guys. You guys are great at leaving comments saying, hey, check out this tip or this trick. 
Just because I do something one way in a video, it doesn't mean that it's the only way I know how to do it. It's just what I happen to pick for that video. But there's a lot of people following this channel that are just starting out. So I love having those tips in the comments for them to read. And that way we all learn from each other. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I just want to say that there are probably dozens more mistakes I've made in my videos. But these were just some that I really wanted to point out because I felt that they were important. And I guess if there's any takeaway from this, it's that we're always learning, we're always evolving, and I am grateful to be able to share this journey <laughs> with you. I will be back again next week with a new furniture flip. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this sort of content. I try to put out a video every week, and I will see you next time.